we head into Memorial Day weekend, we will remember all those brave Americans who laid down their lives to protect our freedoms, including, of course, so many who died during World War II. My next guest is a 93-year-old Navy corpsman, veteran, landed in France on June 6, 1944, at the age of 18. He also served at Okinawa in the Pacific Theater. Now, 75 years later, he will travel back to Normandy for the first time since. A feat once too difficult to face following a 66-year battle with PTSD, which he chronicles in his book, One Veteran's Journey to Heal the Wounds of War. Joining me now is World War II Navy Corpsman Jack Gutman. Jack, thank you so much for being with us. We, we really appreciate it. It's an honor to meet you, and we thank you for your service, sir. Well, I thank you for inviting me here and giving me an opportunity to at least honor our fallen veterans and the veterans that we have right now. Well, we appreciate that so much. And, you know, reading all your notes and what you have written in your book this morning, the thing that obviously is so striking are your memories of that day and how grueling and brutal it was. What do you want to share with people at home about that that perhaps wasn't fully seen, as you point out, in movies like Saving Private Ryan? Well, the one, <clears throat> the one thing that, that I think pr Saving Private Ryan was the closest mm -hmm. I, I believe that they, they could sh show the, what happened in Normandy. Mm -hmm. Because actually, uh, just painting a quick picture, there was 5,000 ships, there was 4,500 um, landing craft, there was 11,000 planes of various sorts, the parachuting and so forth, and there was 150 thousand men, English, Amazing. the Canadians, and the Americans that were going to hit the shores. Yeah. I was 18 years of age. Uh, I was with a unit that we had set up a hospital in England, and I was there for Normandy to assist the medical units in the, the, the army that, uh, that the army already had there. Mm -hmm. But we were going to come in later just to uh, take care of any wounded and evacuate them. And uh, we thought when we saw the bombing and the shelling and everything else like they showed on uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh, and when we heard the planes going over, uh, they had to render those bunkers useless. Yeah. And uh, so I guess when they, we, they, we found out much later, they dropped when they, there was cloud cover and they could not see the um, the, the bunkers, and the bombs dropped a mile away. And unfortunately, the waves, the first right. waves and uh, six waves coming in was having a real problem. They thought it, well, everything would be okay. Yeah. We also thought it would be a cakewalk. When you went in, sir, um, as a corpsman, obviously you saw a lot, and that had a very big impact on you. You say that you had suffered from PTSD for 66 years. Talk to me a little bit about that experience. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Martha, it was um, <clears throat> when you're a carman or a medic, uh, we call a medic or a carman, uh, it's very personal. And you see men on the beach there when, you, when you're when up there taking care of them mm -hmm. and they're crying, mama, mama, and, and you hear guys uh, is pleading for you to help you, uh, to, to help them. Uh, this has a big effect on you. And um, I was 18 years of age, and when you see, like when we came ashore, I thought we would just land and we'd take care of it. But when you see bodies laying in the water and, and body parts laying around, and you realize there's a son or a father or whatever it is, <clears throat> that um, will never go home. Yeah. And I tell you, it, just has an effect on you, and that's what happened to me with Normandy and in, in um, Okinawa. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unimaginable that you were 
at D-Day, and then you were also at Okinawa, and you were 18 years old, it's impossible to imagine that you wouldn't suffer. You wouldn't be a human being if you didn't suffer the effects of that and being exposed to that at such a young age, sir. And, you know, you, but it took you all those years. You said you, that um, one of your family members finally got you to go get help. Tell the message of that and why you think that's so important for anybody who might be at home listening, who might be going through what, you're, what you have yeah. gone through. Yes, I went through um, the, the, ma the flashbacks were magnified. Uh, my daughter, La Paula Shaw, she has a radio show in, in San Diego called Changing Up by Paula Shaw. She's the one that was instrumental in helping me to stop drinking because uh, I was doing crazy things, medicating myself with drinking. And my downfall was uh, was with my whole family there. Thanksgiving, my face went into the plate, mm -hmm. and it was so embarrassing. And then I realized that I needed help, so she got me to stop drinking. And from that, with her grief recovery program she had, and then from that point, I went and got help from the veterans. I thought I didn't. I kept it quiet for 66 years because. I was in a mental institution as a corpsman helping for about two or three weeks, and it scared me. Yeah. And I realized if I told them what was happening to me, they would put me into a mental institution. So I kept it quiet. I never even told people I was in the Navy. And then finally, with the help of the veterans, and I plead, I plead with you veterans, please don't go through 66 years like I did. I did crazy things. There's help there. And the veterans are ready to help you. There are people that are ready to help you. Don't commit suicide or do these crazy things. I plead with you to do that. And I'm looking forward when I go back to Normandy. It's going to be mixed emotions with me because I, um, you know, I was 18 when I was there. And um, someone asked me, what are you going to do when you get there? And I said, well, I don't know. I think one thing I will do. I know I will cry because I will flash back to what happened. Yeah. I will salute and pray for those guys, and I promise people that I will never, ever let them be forgotten. And you know, I want to say one thing to the veterans. All the veterans and all the military men out there who are doing a great job, I want you to, say, to remember one thing. Never think you're not important. You are very important because we are a winning team. We are a chain, a winning team that has a chain of, uh, of group of people. Makes no difference what your rank was. So but true. remember one thing, you are important. When I hit Normandy or Okinawa and I came upon a, uh, a wounded person, I was Jack Cutman, corpsman first class. I was really not that important. I didn't really feel that important. However, when I came upon that wounded man and he's pleading with those pleading eyes and he's saying to me, Doc, help me. Help me. I became the most important man in that man's life at that moment. Yeah. And I want all of you people to realize, you military people and anyone that's going through post-traumatic stress or stress of any kind, get help. There Jack. is light at the end of the tunnel. Jack Gutman, thank you for that very, very important message. And you are a hero, sir. And we thank you very much for your service in World War II. And we hope we'll see you in Normandy. You take care. Thank you very much, sir. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you, Martha, for putting me on. God bless you. It's our honor. God bless you.